So how do we find the interval of conversions? Well, if you note, know, we're always looking at series that have terms of x to the n in them. So we're always going to be really close to geometric series. Usually there's going to be some extra stuff, though. So for our convergence test, we saw that when we had this type of series, we could go to either the ratio or the root test, depending on what kind of terms we're showing up. For the endpoints, you're usually going to need to go to some other test. You're often going to need the alternating series test. So we'll see that in one of the examples. All right, first example. Let's try a sub n equal to n factorial. So my f of x is going to look like this series, n factorial times x, x to the n. So I write out the first few terms like this, 1 plus x plus 2x squared plus 6x cubed. Okay, there's an n factorial in here, so we remember that's a key that we're going to use the ratio test. So we're going to have limit n going to infinity. We we'll take the absolute value of, take our sequence, add 1 to it. So it's n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1. And then we divide by determine our sequence, which is just at n. So it's n factorial x to the n. We simplify this. So if I have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, that's just going to give me an x. We hang on to the absolute value. And then over here, remember, n factorial and n plus 1 factorial are just gotten by multiplying all the numbers from 1 through n and 1 through n plus 1. So when we take this quotient here, you're going to see that everything's going to go away except the n plus 1. So we're going to take the limit of this guy. Well, as I go off to infinity, only two things can happen. If x is equal to 0, then this thing is always going to be 0, and so the limit will be equal to 0. And otherwise, if x is a non-zero number, remember it's fixed, so you might as well pretend it's 2. Well, this n plus 1 is just going to go off to plus infinity. So the only two possibilities that can happen I'm either getting a 0 if x is 0 and otherwise plus infinity. Now, for the ratio test, what are we checking? We're checking to see if this limit is strictly less than 1. Well, if it's going to plus infinity, you haven't got a chance. So this thing is going to be divergent for every x except for 0. And when I'm at 0, we're getting it less than 1. So 0 passes the ratio test. And in fact, you note, if you put 0 in here, you're just going to get f of 0 equal to 1. And that makes perfect sense. So here, our interval of convergence is the point 0, and our radius of convergence is 0. Let's try another example, but now we'll put the n factorial in the bottom. So I'm looking at f of x equal to n going from 0 to infinity, x minus 1 to the n over n factorial. So here, I'm putting the center at 1. I apply the ratio test. Ratio test says we're going to take this limit. I'm going to take my sequence. Wherever I see an n, I put an n plus 1. And then we're going to divide by what we get when we just leave the n alone. So that's going to be the same as flipping this over. We take a look. The x minus 1s are going to cancel entirely except for 1 up on top. And then n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. That's going to leave me with an n plus 1 in the bottom. If I take the limit, doesn't matter what I have for x minus 1. This is just a number. The n plus 1, the bottom, is always going to drive me down to 0. That's always going to be less than 1, strictly. So we're going to have that. The domain for this function is going to be everything. Our interval of convergence is all real numbers. And so that's going to mean the radius of convergence is plus infinity. We'll see later on that this actually matches up to a function that we know. It's going to be e to the x minus 1. And then you'll note that. This thing's defined everywhere, so that's going to agree with our interval of convergence. And if it, at a minimum, we get a picture of what this function looks like. Try one last one where we have the small interval. f of x equal to sum going from 1 to infinity, x plus 2 raised to the nth power over n. So the sequence I'm using here is going to be 1 over n, and we know bad things happen with that, which is good for this example. I apply my ratio test. So I'm just going to put, wherever I have an n, I put an n plus 1. And then we're going to divide by this here with the n left alone. It's going to give me this expression here. We'll notice that x plus 2s are going to cancel entirely except for an x plus 2 in the top. And then I have an n over an n plus 1. When I take the limit, 
the n over n plus 1 is just going to go to 1. This x plus 2 we treat as a constant because you could just put any number you like in there that's going to stay as a number. What's going to happen? What's going to come out of this is absolute value of x plus 2. And it's only going to converge when this term here is strictly less than 1. If it's equal to 1, it's going to be inconclusive. If it's bigger than 1, it's going to diverge, and then the function will be not defined. OK. We're going to take a look at how we decode this. So the rule is, if I have absolute value of x plus 2 strictly less than 1, I decode by just leaving the 1 on that side, and then on the other side I put a minus 1, and then I drop the absolute value. I don't want that 2 in the middle, so I'm going to add minus 2 to each term. And that's going to give me minus 3, strictly less than x, strictly less than minus 1, with this equals here to be determined in a second. So that's almost the interval of convergence. The only thing we have to do now is check the endpoints to make sure we haven't missed anything. OK, endpoints. If I go with a minus 3, I put a minus 3 in here. That's going to turn my term on top into minus 1 to the n over n. We've seen before that that'll converge by the alternating series test. So this is going to be perfectly defined when I put a 3 in there. So I can put the equal sign on this inequality here. How about the other one? If I put a minus 1 in there, that's going to give me 1 to the n, which is just 1. And we're trying to sum 1 over n. That's bad because that's just a p series with p equal to 1. And we know that that's going to diverge for that p. So we won't have an equal sign on our inequality on the right. So that's going to be my interval of convergence. What about the radius of convergence? Well, note, if I draw the picture, what do we have? We have minus 1. This is telling me that the center is at minus 2. And then we also know the other side is 3. So we're looking at this interval here. Okay, Open on minus 1. So you notice the radius is just going to be how much distances are between minus 2 and either of those points. R is going to be equal to 1. 